Well, it seems Sony have done it again. The WHCH720N noise cancelling headphones are creating quite the stir. But the million dollar question is, why are these 99 pound headphones flying off the shelves? We've had loads of messages from you guys asking for our verdict on these 720s and they're getting snapped up left and right, which is why I've tested them out so you don't have to. Don't get me wrong, my XM5s are still my daily drivers and I'm pretty in love with them. But with a price tag of £99, I'm never one to miss out on a bargain, especially if performance can live up to the hype. So let's see if these give us proper bang for our buck. Now, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. The XM5s are class leading for good reason. So we have gotta be realistic with what we can expect from a pair of sub 100 pound cans. But I am intrigued to see how close to the XM5's quality they can come without the flagship cost. Or is the extra £250 a necessary spend for quality over-ear headphones? Well, let's put these to one side and put these 720s to the test. First up, let's talk design then. Available in matte black, white and blue, at first glance, these headphones look pretty fresh and are a decent little upgrade on the previous iteration, the 710Ns. They're very classic Sony with their minimalist design and on the whole, they're nothing but nice to look at and definitely something I can see myself wearing on a day-to-day -day basis. Overall, the build quality is good too. The materials on the outside of the headband and the ear cups does feel a little bit plasticky, but I guess that's to be expected and they do feel relatively sturdy. I don't feel like they're gonna snap the moment you bend them the wrong way. They don't creak or rattle either, which is always a pet peeve of mine with cheap headphones, so top marks on that one. There's some nice Sony detailing on the side of the headband, and I like this strip that covers the metal band, and the external mics look good too. It's all nicely color matched with the rest of the design, which is definitely a nice touch. I think based on aesthetics alone, I do prefer my XM5s, but that's to be expected with all the premium materials, and. Although these are a noticeable step down in quality, they aren't half bad. And if I'm honest, better than I was expecting. Sorry, Sony. When it comes to comfort, these are light, very light in fact. I think they're around 190 grams, which Sony have said is their lightest over-ear noise cancelling headphones to date, which is a massive plus for me. All of the bits that come in contact with your head are covered with decent enough padding with a nice leather effect finish, which no, isn't as premium as the memory foam you get with the XM5s, but it does the job and they were still way more comfortable than I was expecting when I had them on for long stints in the office. My ears didn't get too hot and I didn't feel any headaches brewing with them sitting too tight on my head, so no complaints there. You've also got enlarged ear cups in comparison to the last iteration, so if you're anything like me and your ears are 90% earlobe, you'll have no issue keeping these on for a long time too. The only real problem I encountered when wearing them was it felt like my ear did touch the interior speakers because of the lack of the padding in and around here, which did get annoying after a while and isn't something I've ever found with my XM5s. But at this sort of price point, as long as they're comfy enough to wear for your long periods, then I don't think you can go too far wrong. What about controls then? Well, unlike a lot of the premium headphone models out there, the 720Ns go without any of the fancy touch controls, which is a miss for me. It's not necessarily the end of the world though, because I know a lot of you guys actually like the physical buttons, so I think it just depends on what your preferences are. You've also got your USB-C charging port and a 3.5 millimeter analog input in case a battery ever dies and you wanna go for a wired listening experience instead. The majority of the magic though is gonna happen on the right hand side. Here you've got your volume buttons and a play pause button which also wakes up your chosen voice assistant if you press and hold it so you can go totally hands free. You've also got your noise cancelling and ambient awareness toggle down here too which controls whether you want to fully remove the distractions or if you'd rather have some external noise penetrate the headphones which is always a good little safety feature when you're near a road, for example. Whilst we're talking about features though, thanks to the built-in Sony V1 chip that's also found in the XM5s, these headphones are a pretty big upgrade on their predecessor when it comes to battery life, jaw noise sensor A and C functionality, and active voice pickup for calls and things like that. As with all wireless headphones though, good battery life is king. And to be fair, with up to 35 hours of full noise cancellation, I think these are gonna give most people more than enough for their day-to-day -day usage. And honestly, I was expecting a lot less at this price. I mean, they're actually built to last five hours longer than my XM5s are, so take that as you will. It gets better though. 
If you're really out in the sticks with these and need to nurse the charge, you can get up to 50 hours of battery by turning off the noise cancellation completely. Plus, if you need some juice, the three minute quick charging feature can also give you up to an hour's playback with ANC on, which is nuts. I'm always forgetting to charge my kit and I know I can't be the only one, so I can see that being a genuine lifesaver for some of you guys. For reference, I've been testing these out all week and haven't need to charge yet. In terms of ANC and call quality, just like I mentioned earlier, these features have all been given an upgrade in comparison to their predecessor. And whilst I've had really good experiences using these features day to day, on my walks to work, in and around the office, I think you guys are gonna really benefit from hearing it for yourself. So I'm actually gonna pass these over to our resident product testing connoisseur, Sam, and he's gonna show you exactly what they're all about. So as you can see, we've been out testing. It's pretty windy today. There's a train line behind me. There's a busy business park with there full of cars and the noise cancelling is actually pretty decent for the price point. It blocks out wind better than it does cars and stuff, but for this price, I'm really not disappointed. It's actually really decent. All right, so I'm out testing the core quality on these now and uh, we've got some cars driving past. It's a little bit windy, not as much as earlier but uh, hopefully the core quality comes across really well. I mean, when we were testing, we were quite impressed with these because for the price point, they're actually really decent for core quality. So uh, yeah, there's a train going by now. Hopefully you can't hear it, but yeah, let us know what you think down in the comments below. Okay, so rather than take our word for it, we've come to a very busy road. It's very windy. Any danger, Sam? What's he doing? I'm gonna start with turning noise cancelling off and then ambient mode and then turn it on. See how it goes. Oh, here he is. What did you think? I am very impressed with these. So when you told me that I was going to test the noise cancelling on a £99 pair of headphones, I was expecting, you know, the like hiss and static that you get on cheaper headphones? Mm -hmm. I was expecting that and it just wasn't there. And the noise cancelling is actually pretty decent. Like, it's better with wind than it is cars, but I was expecting that for £99, you know? Mm -hmm. So final thoughts, what are you thinking? I think overall they're good, but they're not XM5 quality, but that is to be expected from these headphones. But the gap between them is much closer than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, all right, bro. Well, thanks for that. No worries. I'll take them back off you. Now, Sony have also made it possible to get these synced up with the Sony headphones app. You can listen without ever using the app, but there's some pretty neat features that you might want to make the most of. The first of those is ear shape analysis, which tailors a sound signature specifically to you when listening to 360 reality audio. This is essentially Sony's version of spatial audio, but unfortunately it only works with these platforms at the minute. But things are always changing, so if that's something you're into, it's worth knowing. You've also got your customizable EQ siders and some presets to really fine tune your listening experience to suit you. If you're interested, this is how I've been listening to the 720Ns, but obviously what works for me might be different for you. But it's a nice place to start to get a little bit more from your headphones. You'll also find the DSEE toggle, which you can switch on or off, but that should be set to auto from the get-go. You can also make use of the multi-point pairing feature too, so you can connect two devices simultaneously via Bluetooth, and you can switch easily between the two audio sources without going through the standard rigmarole of Bluetooth reconnection, which is a massive plus, especially if you're like me and you wanna connect to your, both your phone and your PC at the same time whilst you're sat at your desk. You can also pick your chosen voice assistant and make the most of the adaptive sound control feature, which will detect your actions and location and adjust your headphones accordingly to automatically switch how you take in ambient noise, which is actually pretty cool if you ask me. Beyond that, the app's got everything you'd expect, like turning ANC fully off and changing the auto power down duration. It's intuitive and I've not really had any problems with it. Right then, the question on everyone's lips. How do these actually sound? Well, straight out of the box, I think the best way to describe it is pleasantly surprising. The low end was dealt with really well and there's plenty enough detail and clarity in the mid range and highs too. They dealt with a wide range of genres really well and were pretty much unbothered by any of the more complex tracks that I listened to. 
They definitely feel very Sony-esque, albeit at a less high performing level, but I think these headphones know exactly what they are. Don't get me wrong, it's not a mind blowing listening experience, but at this sort of price, I don't think you'd be expecting that anyway. I think when you consider what people want at this price range and what you're actually getting in terms of performance, you're really gonna struggle to match it. Obviously, they didn't hit the performance of my XM5s that sound effortlessly smoother, fuller, and more dynamic, but I wouldn't say they were 250 pounds worse by any stretch. And without saying this too loudly, if they were more expensive, I'd probably be okay with paying a little more for sound quality alone. Now, it's obvious that a lot of Sony's learnings from their premium lines like the XM or XB range have found their way into the 720Ns, and to be honest, that can only mean one thing for us as users. We're getting better headphones at a much more affordable price point, which is ultimately what we love. On the whole, I've been left really impressed with the 720Ns. No, they're not my XM5s, but they're not trying to be. At £99, we all know there's gonna be some compromises somewhere, and I think no one is more aware of that than Sony. They haven't gone out there to create a pair of headphones that has one insane feature that steals the show. They've made a pair of cans that are just inherently good at pretty much everything. I think your XM5s are the Porsches of the headphone world. They're sleek, premium, they ooze class, and they've got the performance to match. The 720Ns? Well, they're your Volvo. They do the job very well, and they get you from A to B, and you know exactly what you're gonna get. And that's good value for money and practicality. I can see myself wearing them, and I can see myself being more than happy with the performance. And I can now see why there is so much hype around them, even though they might not be for me specifically. I think they're a brilliant pair of entry-level headphones which benefit from premium technology trickling down. And for the price, I think you'll be very happy and will struggle to find much better. So hopefully I've helped you get a little closer to figuring out if these are right for you. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.